Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to another video. Things have changed. Look at this. Look at this. It looks still very messy, but look at the floor space. A <laughs> little bit of oil down, transmission, engines cleaned up. But I tell you, it's coming together, looking a lot better. Got some stuff moving. Still got a long way to go, though. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, just like that engine needs to go. All these parts need to go. We got some stuff here that needs to go. Need to put this in the shed, get the bike in the shed. Well, it's summertime. Maybe I'll just put that somewhere on the roof or I don't know. That engine's got to go. Um, box full of parts got to go. Like just, whew, I want this whole bay cleaned up. We got to get ourselves a third gen Camaro in here somewhere, somehow. Also, as you can see, I got a, a mic on me. That's new. A cheap Amazon mic that I'm going to try and see if the audio is any better. If you guys like it, let me know. If you hate it, let me know. And I'll take it off. Because it just feels weird putting that on. But they say, you know, the volume is more consistent that way. You know, Daryl, that's for you, I guess. <laughs> so, like, I could put the camera down way over there somewhere. And you should technically still be able to hear me way over here yonder or wherever I am. So that'll be neat if it works for a $40 mic setup. So yeah, I guess we'll see. Got the heater that just turned on. I guess we'll see how loud that is now with the mic, if it's actually noise canceling or not. Also have, you know, the YouTube's going on here with the volume still on. We'll see if that filters out. You know, six snails. That dude's got an awesome car. Love watching that thing rip. So, I'm just going to pause this right now and just check on how the audio is. I'm going to jump back into it. Well, you know what? Uh, that's actually not even half bad for the price I just paid for it. Uh, I could hear the heater start up a little bit, and then it, the noise da died down, actually. So, yeah, not bad. We'll try it for this video, and we'll see how it works out. So, let's give you some update. Um, working on the LS 5.3 build here. I uh, got the new pistons. So I got our uh, piston to wall clearance measured out. And I got the loosest in uh, cylinder number 8 and 7. Um, loosest being uh, 1 thou and 8 tenths. And the average size for all these guys are sitting at 1 thou and 6 tenths. Um, so... I think, uh, you know, pretty average clearances for a hyper eutectic style piston. Um, they are uh, definitely not as consistent in their sizing as, uh, and that sounds like it's going to be really loud. I'm just going to like turn that down for a bit just because I'm paranoid. So anyway, they're not as consistent as a, you know, a nice aftermarket piston would be. Um, you know, size from one piston to the next is out by a couple of tenths. Um, but the bores are the same way. It is, you know, not bored to spec, so to speak. They are just honed with the dingleberry hone. So what I did basically measured out the piston, used my dial bore gauge and just fitted them to each bore and just made them as consistent as I could. Larger piston and a looser bore, etc. Um, so I think I did pretty good there. We're sitting basically at one thou and six tenths across the board with the exception of a couple looser ones being in the back because the back always needs a little bit more, um, less cooling back there. And I don't know, somehow it just always works that the seven and eight cylinders want to bust out a ring line. Um, I think we talked about another video, but we have, we have our, uh, rod bearing clearances measured out. The crankshaft is installed in the engine. Those rod bearing clearances are good. The end play is good. Um, so this thing's ready to complete the short block. Got the rings gapped. I uh, talked about that in the uh, lot, one of the other videos as well. If you got any questions there, just let me know in the comments. Um, so I'm going to get these guys married up, get them in the block, and then the short block is done. And then I got a set of cylinder heads here. These are 862s. Um, I think I have another set here somewhere. Of course, just sitting right here, right in front of my face. And these ones are actually, can you see it? 
I can't even see it. These ones are 706s. From what I can see from that dirty casting mark there. So I'll double check it. But uh, I'll look over these heads and we'll see which set we want to use for this build. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. I got the ultrasonic cleaner uh, doing some work here. It's heating up anyway, getting ready. And then I'm going to get some parts cleaned up. Um, guys, I tell you, that ultrasonic cleaner stuff is awesome. I'm getting in the weeds here. But uh, my Uncle Johnny, uh, we cleaned a couple of carburetors for him, tractor carburetors, and worked awesome. He had a tractor that wasn't running that great. They tried all the old school tricks with the carb cleaner in the bucket overnight and just couldn't get it cleaned out. This to the trick. I'll put a little clip in here of that tractor running. It runs awesome. So anyway, back on track. It just still feels weird. Um, I also have an S10 update for you. You probably saw in the background that we got the transmission sitting here pulled apart. Trying to figure out why we lost second gear in that thing. Um, basically, it shifted a second and just blew through it, right? So immediately, we think Sprague. Something going on there, which I'm pretty confident it did. It doesn't look like it rolled the sprag, but it looks like it definitely uh, probably chattered it. Um, also, what we're seeing is the direct drum is contacting the retaining plate here on the center support. Right there, you can see. And it's actually spinning this plate, and it's uh, the springs that are underneath here, the retaining springs, uh, they're twisting, and one of them was actually folded in half. Uh, so that's pretty wild. Also, on the sun tube, sorry, on the center support right here, it was grinding on the direct drum right in here. So as you can see, she's wore out. And this is not a cheap drum. It is a aluminum direct drum. Um, but unfortunately, I think she's done, guys. I think it's time to replace this thing. Uh, we've already, the last rebuild, these edges right in here, we've already filed those smooth because the clutches are gripping it pretty hard. There you can see a couple new divots. So we are actually just going to replace this. I don't know if we just got a defective drum or if it's just a, you know, a cheap Chinese one that they put in their trans or what. Um, it's got some damage on the end here as well. So whatever. Inside. Where the ceiling rings go that doesn't look bad but so we're going to replace that drum we actually have a pro mod 36 element uh sprag setup coming um that'll be a nice upgrade over the 34 element on this setup which is here um the sprag on here when it's on the drum it actually it's got some play uh so i haven't measured out the race yet compared to a factory one just to see if that thing is pooched as well. Um, so I'll measure that out as well, just for curiosity's sake. Um, also have a new center support coming with the upgrade down below here. So this is actually machined out on it and it's got a um, Torrington bearing in here for the direct drum to ride on and it'll help us stabilize that direct drum and keep it centered. We also have the roller bearing on the bottom side uh, Wow, I'm drawing a brain fart. I got a brain fart going here, guys. Help me out. So we got the rolling bearing on the forward hub here as well. Um, that's going to ride here. We're going to make sure that clearance is good. And uh, that, that should do it. I mean, it should stabilize our hub as much as we can. Um, also, we'll see if this uh, second ring here is machined off on the second uh, or on the new center support. If it's not, we'll probably just get that chucked on a lathe real quick and we'll just clean up that second line because we're not using it anyway. It'll just help promote some more flow because, uh, you know, we like a lot of flow around here. Um, so basically, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the direct drum to come off, off the sun tube right here because right now it's riding. The direct drum will actually rest on here. And if this clearance is too tight, she's going to be sitting too low. Plus the fact that it wasn't well supported, it was 
a little wobbly, so I think it was gripping on here. Um, so basically, by putting that bearing here, we're going to come off the sun tube, and we're now going to use the center support for uh, that end play for that thrust. So now it's no longer going to go through the sun tube and out through to the rear uh, bearing or bushing on the case, like the rear of the case. So um, definitely looking forward to that. That should help us out here a lot. And then with the 36 element Sprague versus the 34, I think we'll be in good shoes. So hopefully this thing stays together now for a long time because, man, I tell you, these parts are expensive. Like, expensive. It's expensive American. Never mind getting that sucker swapped out to Canadian and out here, you know. Um, do have some new intermediate clutches coming. These are actually a dark color when you put them in. So no, they're not burnt, um, although they are a little bit thin. So we are going to, that did not focus at all. But uh, we're going to swap those out, make sure our, our clearance in the intermediate clutch pack is good. And we're good there. Otherwise, some pretty cool updates for the S10, aside from the transmission getting upgraded. Uh, we have, uh, do I want to talk about it or do I want to show you when it comes in? I might just show you. I'll talk, talk about one more upgrade. We have the uh, rear gear is a 327 rear gear. So it's pretty low gear. Um, and the reason we did that way back was because we had a 248 first gear ratio in the Turbo 400. So stock gear set. But when we were coming off the line, it was just always too violent. And we were trying to tone it down, tame it down, um, just to get it under control. That coupled with the weight bias issues we had front to back. Um, it was just brutal to try to be consistent. If the track was not even a little bit perfect, you know, it just we couldn't get it down. Um, mind you, we're not the best suspension tuners out there to begin with. But uh, So anyway, that's why we put 327s in there to get the starting line ratio down so it would be easier to leave off the line. Um, but now we had 210, 140 gear ratio, our gear set put in the Turbo 400 last year which worked way better. Um, but now we had 327 gears in it still. So she was loading up pretty hard off the line. I mean, we were, shoot. We added 250 pounds to the rear of the truck to get the weight bias right. So now we added a bunch of weight, 327 rear gears, 210 first gear, starting line ratio was really low, 28 inch tire. And we were leaving on what, 12, 13 pounds of boost already? and ramping it into like 22, somewhere in there in a second. And uh, it was working good, don't get me wrong, but she's loading up hard. So no wonder our intermediate side here just took a dump, I guess, plus with mediocre parts. I mean, what are you gonna do? It happens. So we found a weak link. Now we can upgrade and we can go from there. So 355 gears is going in. It'll help us leave off the line a little easier, especially with the added weight to the truck. And hopefully we can pull some weight off the front of the truck so we can pull some weight out of the back of the truck, if that makes sense, to keep our weight bias right. And uh, we should be good. We should be good. So we'll see what happens there. Um, I'll, I'll uh, hold off on talking about the other upgrade we're doing for a little bit here. Um, share that in another video when we get the trans together back in the truck and some parts start showing up. So we are waiting on parts. So a little teaser, I guess. Um, Anyway, that's enough rambling. This is going on for a long time already. Wow. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get the rotating assembly put together on the 5.3, slap that together, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, give you an update right after. Okay, so as you can see, rotating assembly is complete. So uh, yeah, not much more to say about that. <laughs> Uh, connecting rod bolts, these are the later style, so 15 foot pounds of torque, and then twist to 75 degrees. So, in my case, snap on torque wrench, worked out very nice. Get this thing flipped over here one handed. Beauty of a small block, aluminum. <laughs> so, yeah, here we go. All fresh, ready to go. Making sure all my pistons are in there the right way. <laughs> so obviously that would suck. Um, 
looking at, I know this is kind of a debate, but looking at your, your rod big end, you got your uh, chamfer on it uh, or your gap. And then you got your chamfer on your connecting, your journal on the crank. And you guys are saying it doesn't matter on an LS. You know, you put the rod either way, it doesn't matter. But I like to make sure that I got the most room against that radius on the, uh, the journal to the crank throw. I don't know. Does that make any sense? Am I talking just gibberish? But anyway, I try to get the rod flipped in the way that you have the most clearance possible on that radius, no matter what build I'm working on. So just force a habit. I know I've seen some videos where guys saying it doesn't matter, just put them wherever you want. Yeah, maybe, but I don't know. Build this muscle memory in and then I think about it all the time, right? So yeah, I think I'm just going to cut this video off. I don't even know how long it's going to be, but that's okay. It's a pretty nice update. Um, LS build coming along nice. Get those heads tore down, get them cleaned up, get the transmission parts, get that going. We'll give you an update there when more parts show up for that as well. So I guess until then, you know, thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for another one.